Hello, my name is Moti Fine. I'm the product manager for MBT. And today I'll walk you through the user journey when using MBT. MBT is a management platform for the functional testing business. It is meant to help the team organize the work, make sure they work more efficiently, make sure all the areas of the application are getting good coverage, testing coverage. And it also greatly helps to collaboration between the business analysts who have high uh, degree of application knowledge and the QA professionals that have high degree of uh, testing and automation knowledge. The main focal point of a model-based testing and system is obviously the model. And this is the model repository of my demonstration system here. The operator can highlight a model and see a preview on the right to get a glimpse of what it is. I can highlight the second model. That's a much simpler one. That's the third model and so on. By clicking the model ID, we go into the editor. And this is a interactive canvas that lets business analysts, business professionals, and QA professionals come together to agree and to draw together on how the application looks like, what are the business processes, what are the steps, what's connected to what, and so on. The basic element of a model is called the unit, like here. And uh, this is basically a reference to an existing automation script. So again, MBT as a management platform doesn't deal with the automation. It expects the automation to be ready and created outside of MBT in the automation framework being used. The other element in a model could be a submodel, just like you see here with the login submodel. And I can click the plus button to see the units that comprise this submodel. So for uh, business processes that repeat themselves, such as login, it makes sense to create a submodel and reuse that in many other models. A uh, model can have uh, comments, just like you see here. Um, as a general comment or a comment on a specific branch that explains specific logic. The um, model is manipulated interactively on screen. Let's see an example. Let's assume that I like to add a two-phase authentication step after login. So I'm gonna take the draft entity, put something meaningful, two-phase authentication. This is future for say version 3.4. And I'm gonna delete this connector, add a connector here, another connector here. I can use the pretty formatter to put it all in order and I've added another step. This step is now draft. It doesn't reference any script. Once the automation script is created, in the future, within an hour or next week, uh, it will appear here on the left on our tool chest. And at that point, the operator will only need to uh, pick it. I'm going to pick something else and just drop it on top of a draft. And now this unit is part of the business model. I can click Save. And I've just amended the model. Very handy, very useful collaboration tool. From here, the operator can ask MBT to generate the specific testing path or the suggested testing path. The default um, algorithm, the default strategy that we use will generate each and every possible path within the given model. If you can see, this is quite an extensive model. And the system actually generated 1,440 different paths through this model. And again, the operator can highlight a model and see a preview. So that's the first model. Here's the second model. Sorry, it's the first path, the second path, the third path. And you can see the only difference between them is the final unit that is being traversed. That's the fourth one. The fifth path will make a change here. And so on and so forth. And obviously, going through 1,440 different paths, although we'll test the application uh, extensively, uh, is quite exhaustive. 
So we have another strategy, and this one is more suitable for smoke test or sanity test. It actually guarantees to go through each and every unit at least once, maybe more, but at least once. So for that specific model that we're looking at, it generated only five paths. Let's look at the first one, the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Believe me, I did this demonstration 200 times. It does go through each and every unit at least once. Some units like those here who sit on a critical path will be obviously visited more, in fact, every time, but any other unit will also visit it at least once. From here, the operator can pick all or just some of the paths that are relevant and generate an MBT test entity out of them. That takes a moment. Let's go into an MBT test entity. The main element is of course the list of scripts that need to be executed in specific order to fulfill that specific path that has been selected. And again, is highlighted on the right. The second element are the parameters. And for that specific path, for those specific scripts, we found 25 different input parameters that need to be handled. The operator can either manually punch in the data uh, line by line, and each line is an iteration, or can import an already existing CSV file. After data set has been attached to the MBT test, the test is then associated with a test suite. I have prepared a test suite called the Motis test suite, and I'm going to select that and associate this MBT test with the test suite. Done. Now let's go to the test suite. Here is my test suite. Here is the MBT test that I just created a moment ago. And now we can send this test suite for execution on a target machine that has the necessary automation framework to execute those scripts. And the uh, results will be sent back to MBT and will sit here. That's the basic user flow, the basic journey within MBT. I hope you enjoy this demonstration. We'll be happy to answer questions you may have. Thank you very much. Yeah.